birds. I don't want this to end. Yeah, there's been stuff from the beginning. Aaron has changed, but he's also always been Aaron. All that stuff has always been there. This is very much a product of who he is and how he was raised and his experiences. Right. I mean, that's sort of the tragedy of Aaron, is that it's not all of that. It's That's not all there is to him. There's a lot of really amazing things to him, too. Yeah, final season, my ass. <laughs> final season, just kidding. It's pretty amazing. Levi looking fantastic. Interesting. Looking great. The Dawn of Humanity, damn, what a title. That is one of the great things about the last couple episodes. I think the show is trying to draw intentional parallels to the very beginning of the show. But what's amazing about it is ending up in a similar place, but with a lot more perspective. One of the big things of the show is there's certain fundamental problems with humanity. There's a certain fundamental darkness in the world. Those problems are not going away. And so it's sort of an individual journey to understand that, shed a light on the darkness and sort of localize the mission, you know, localize the mission to oneself and what oneself is doing without letting the world, without letting the darkness of the world drag you down and into the depths of hell or keep you stuck there at least to save yourself from the forest i guess all the characters have gone through major conflicts obviously in their lives but more on point to the theme i'm talking about in themselves and their own desires and trying to find out what the right thing was despite in intense fear and pressure and desire erwin obviously being the ultimate paradigm of someone who found the answer and sort of completed his arc they haven't completed theirs yet but it's a lot clearer what it is and maybe more importantly it's clearer what it isn't they're clearer on who they aren't and it hasn't destroyed them which is the other end of the spectrum and is a real possibility for a lot of the characters. These are the people who have not given in. We're in Marley. Wait, is this a flashback? This is a flashback. That's Sasha. Is this Mikasa's flashback? Right, they've, they've been to Marley before. That's why Leva looks so great. Oh, I was hoping he was recovered. And that's why Eren was there. I thought it was like a her imagination. I was joking about a flashback episode. Here we are. That's so, so brutal. So brutal. Only Attack on Titan would do that. And now your life is complete and now you are free, just like you always wanted. You just lost your belongings. You just lost all your wallets. Right for the food. Uh, this is the, like, bright spot of a flashback, I guess. We get to live with Sasha again for a little while. I remember my first ice cream cone. Did they get, like, a Marley and money allowance to be here? Oh, what is going on? Do not take candy from this man, Levi. If clowns weren't already creepy enough. I just got chills, and not good ones. Please leave, you're terrifying. Enjoy your freedom, Aaron. Freedom is cold ice cream cone on a hot summer day. Oh. Ah, it hurts. That's Levi's background. He knows that life from his childhood. This kid's sweating it out. This is one of the hard, hardest things about being idealistic or having like a strong backbone and wanting to set up for morality. You can't fight every battle. Levi being a real hero. I was half expecting him to start kicking the kid. It's a huge gamble, already being on enemy shores. And the gamble intensifies. <laughs> this one, great, great first time Marley. We're all blending in. I see they went to the Avatar school of blending in. <laughs> he got the purse. Or someone else. Oh, he got Levi's purse. It feels to me like Mikasa's afraid of Eren, or was afraid of Eren. It just means too much to her. It's really tough, you know, if you love someone to that degree, or perhaps are obsessed with them to that degree, you're in a compromised position from the beginning, and a lot of times that is correlated with, not accidentally, the other person sort of being distant and being ready to let go, being ready to lose the relationship. And there are things perpetuating that from multiple directions, like being in Eren's position, you know and feel that Mikasa is obsessed and is sort of yours, so it's easier to abuse that. It's easier to react severely to any kind of criticism or any kind of honest thought that doesn't 
please you or doesn't appeal to you. And it's a cycle because the other person also knows that and therefore is going to be more hesitant to say things, say things that need to be said. You know, there are things that need to come out, things you see in people and their behavior that you know is bad and you know is wrong. But because your priority is keeping them in your life, you will let it slide rather than say the things that need to be said for you or maybe even for them. You sort of cling to this notion that if you don't rock the boat, it'll be smooth sailing, but it, it never is. That's just not how it works. There's sort of only one hope and that is to fight, but to fight means to be okay losing. And until you can get to that place where you're okay to lose, you don't really have any leverage. There's no limit to how far you can be pushed. And so people who are not sort of scrupled in that way will just push all the way. And so Mikasa's sort of telling herself a big lie, you know, just hang in there, hope for the best. Aaron, Aaron's fine. He'll turn it around. But in her heart, she knows that he's sort of too far gone, at least for her. And to get anywhere better would mean doing something she's not willing to do, which is sacrifice what she has right now. It's a tough place to be in. It hurts like hell, and I sympathize. It's just getting harder for them. And I'm sure there's a lot of resentment for that too. That kind of dynamic falls in its head real fast. Admiration and power is also envy and danger. There's a group of people fighting on behalf of the citizens of Ymir, people of Ymir. Unfortunately, peace was not on the menu that day. They don't know their chances of success. It's hard to fathom the amount of pressure and fear that must have gone into this. It's so hard to make that enough emotionally. No guarantee, no promises. All the odds against you. Just a feeling that something is the right thing to do. Right, he acts without them, right? That's how that goes down. He's got to feel super alone. Yep, Aaron and Mikasa know what that's like. She probably doesn't even know herself. It's this guy just sidled up out of nowhere. They're just they're causing so much commotion. This is gonna be a fun night. <laughs> That's not water. That's some homemade Ymir hooch. Yeah, this old man knows how to get down. <laughs> I wonder what they're like drunk. I bet Aaron would be a mean drunk under a lot of circumstances. Drunk, drunk montage and attack on Titan. And this is what travel is all about. Getting drunk with the locals. Some bottles were thrown, I see. It's not a good night unless you're throwing bottles at people. That's cute. This is the last time they spend together in peace. This guy, speaking of balls, he's got him. Oh, <laughs> okay. It's not a whole lot better. Imagine sitting there listening to this. Probably not what we were hoping for. But we already knew it didn't work. We already knew peace didn't work. So, yeah, I guess he was also holding out hope, too. It feels to me like he wasn't looking for bloodshed necessarily, but he'd already sort of made up his mind that the world was the way he thought it was and that bloodshed would be necessary and maybe wasn't that opposed to it. And because of that leading, was sort of looking for just final confirmation or a final push, which, sadly, they gave him. Yeah, that's how that all went down. I don't think it would have made that much of a difference. But I understand trying to cling to cling to that idea. It'd be great to get some Aaron perspective. It's been such a crazy ride. Flashes on the inside. You're going to have to do a lot, Flish Flash. Long time to see Historia. Yeah, 
世界を滅ぼす<笑>一匹残らず駆逐するそんなの間違ってる That's a relief to hear Right, right. I really want to hear him reckon with this idea. Just kill everyone who could possibly have revenge fueled hate. That's a lot. Ooh. That's not an answer at all. Personally, I believe that while there might be this mystical thing to Mikasa, that's not all it is. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with Zeke for the first time in my life. Also, in a weird way, it's sort of like, what's the difference? You know, and it's hard to say for sure because it's a magical thing and what does it really mean? But if part of her composition is this feeling of instinct towards protecting Eren, that's part of who she is and it almost doesn't need a reason. I have strong bonding instincts or the capabilities for that. I don't have an Ackerman curse and it sometimes feels supernatural. It feels like something that comes from a depth of myself that I can't even see. In thinking about behavior, we sort of put a higher weight on our logical faculties and our visible mind and we think that emotions sort of come from that and that's definitely true they do but there's another direction as well that might actually be a lot stronger which is something that is at a gut instinctual animal level that seeps up into cognition we all know the feeling or have witnessed other people be horribly wrong yet convicted they are right and a lot of the time it's because they are reasoning towards what they've already decided deep down and are trying to get the heart and the mind in harmony in order to sort of destroy dissonance between the two and that's love or at least infatuation in a nutshell you know like someone can be totally wrong for you but you can believe fully and argue that they're right for you and it's because you're bonded so it doesn't need to be a Ackerman curse like Mikasa's behavior already feels real to me was it Eren? what is he doing right now? what is going on? yes this is this is a real part of Eren too. He loves his friends. It's like the one thing, one of the only things he deeply cares about. Back in the present? I don't know if this boat's gonna do it. How many boats you got? I feel like this is gonna be a pathetic showing. Yeah, as we know, nothing takes out Titans like cannons. Their one weakness. Oh my god, they can swim! They're swimming! This is the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm shocked that that charge actually took out a titan, a colossal titan. Things like that should not be allowed to swim. That's just unfair. I thought they were gonna just walk along the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> Hasn't it been established that there, there are like a million of these things? Do they even have a million bullets? Oh, the steam! Yep. How embarrassing. <laughs> Swimming with some powerful force there. Hey, you're next! Yikes. These, these people are very brave. They are very brave. Although, what choice do they have? They run now and survive for a little while and just die later. Yeah, I, I'm surprised it took them that long, honestly. Oh, he's here! Holy crap, he's huge. Oh my god! I can't fathom the horror. I can't imagine the horror. Ugh. Oh no, why does it have to end there? Damn, that is a... That is a cliffhanger. The war has begun. Man, I have so many mixed feelings. Like, on the one hand, I'm relieved there's more. Like, I was low-key hoping this would happen. I was hoping that there would be more to the show, because it's just too good to end. I hope there are eight final seasons, to be honest. That was a really great scene to end it on, because we, we know it's coming. Like, this whole season has been about the rumbling. They finally reached the other shore. Eren being realized, in a sense, this has been a very long time coming for him. But also, it's a weird episode to end on, just because a lot of it was flashback, and I feel like there are some details in there, and probably details that I missed that were really important. But it was ultimately largely a flashback. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I can't believe I made that joke, like, that would be the most brutal Attack on Titan thing they could do. And, of course, if it's the most brutal thing that they can do, you can pretty much be guaranteed that Attack on Titan will do it. Eren's final form is so unbelievably terrifying, and also the conviction with which he's just gonna oversee 
this destruction and you know what? He's gonna enjoy it. And honestly, I'm not even gonna try to pretend I'm better than that. I mean, I wanna think I'm better than that. I don't know if I'd be able to do something on this scale, but maybe I would, you know, because I look at microcosms of this in my life where I lose something I want or I am face to face with my own powerlessness and there is a negative consequence for me that is absolutely emotionally devastating. And I know in that moment, or at least I fear, or I highly suspect that if I had the power to do what I wanted to do and get what I wanted to get, I'm not sure I'd have the self-control. You know, I'm not sure I would be the Erwin Smith. I might be the Aaron. You know, also what people don't tell you is that a really great choice, a really strong choice doesn't solve the problem. Erwin died, so that sort of settled that. And he died peacefully, which is great. But a lot of times you make a, a difficult decision like that and you lose something that's valuable to you. You may feel right in the moment, but it's going to nag at you. You know, it's going to eat at you that you lost. The pain is going to hurt. You're going to suffer. You're going to wonder if you made the right choice. You might even reverse your choice. You know, I had a moment where recently I was asked to do something that just felt fundamentally wrong to me. And there were really high stakes or something really important for me, something I've sacrificed a lot for and would continue to sacrifice for, clearly at stake. And it was sort of a binary this or that. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. Like I started doing it. I started doing it and I, I just, I caught myself. I'm like, if I make this concession, there's no going back. You know, if I do this thing that feels wrong to me, there's no more line anymore. You know, like there's a lot of things I'm willing to sacrifice, but at that moment I felt like I was sacrificing myself. But man, did I want to do it. Like the instinct was so powerful. Like everything in me was screaming about how great it would feel and how beautiful it would be and how easy it would be too, to just get what I want and throw away that voice in my head telling me that it was wrong or that it wasn't good for me. But I ultimately decided to stay true to what felt right. And I was proud of myself, but I'd be lying if I said it felt good. It was devastating. It continues to be devastating. I don't know if put in that situation again, I might make the other choice because I'm so compelled, you know? It's like really easy to talk about strength and doing the right thing when you're not compromised, when you're not strong, when you're not working with that level of emotion and desire. And I know in my heart that in the end, I will look back on it and reflect on the fact that I made the right choice. Not because of the circumstances of it, but because I listened to myself and I did what I felt was right. And I had my own back and I listened to my own inner voice, you know? But I say all that to say I'm not, well, I am judging Aaron a little bit, but it's not that I don't have sympathy for the guy. I mean, I'm talking about about my problem, what have I experienced? You know, it's nothing compared to what Aaron has experienced. Aaron sort of has been defined by powerlessness. You know, powerlessness mixed with rage and mixed with pain and tragedy and watching loved ones die for no reason. Innocent victims perishing to fight someone else's grudge, you know, someone else's war. I get the reasoning, you know, like if that's the world and if people are going to do all these terrible things with power, then the answer is to get power yourself and crush them. But I think lost in that analysis is the fact that none of that happened in a vacuum and there are cycles that these create and the fatal flaw in Aaron's thinking is thinking this will wipe out vengeance. It's not going to wipe out vengeance. It's not going to solve any fundamental problems of humanity. There will just be other groups to target. There will be other warfare. There will be other victims. And in the meantime, there's just unbelievably devastating loss of life and potential. And he's creating the very same pain, although it's easier for him to create that pain because it's not his pain. Like he's literally, like Historia said, killing his own mother in a sense. And he's killing Armin's and he's killing himself as a child, you know? But those are unknown faces to him. And in the place of their real identities, he's putting a label, just like people labeled the Eldians, the devil, you know, it's just this nation of evil people that deserve to be wiped out. But all the nuance is lost in there. All the subtlety, all the humanity. And it's cost him his soul. It's probably going to cost him his life. And it won't even get him the results he wants. That's sort of like the, a weird law, in my opinion, of the universe. Like you trade things of value for circumstance, you get neither. And also I get the audience reaction. You know, I'm not judging the audience for supporting Aaron. He speaks to something really important and really powerful. You know, the feeling a lot of people have of powerlessness and seeing injustice and not knowing how to deal with injustice. It's really easy to, to go from that to just anger and wanting bloodshed and wanting to see the people who have harmed you be harmed. I really get it. And I really sympathize and I really love Aaron, I would even say to a certain degree, even though I, I'm afraid of him and even envy him to some extent, you know, like I think the ultimate solution for the individual is not just being good and it's not just winning. It's having Aaron like power and also being good and doing the right thing. That is the ultimate person. That is what is heroic. You know, it's like you have the power to influence things. You could destroy things. You could crush people. You could annihilate your enemies, but you have a different kind of strength. You have a, a sort of measured strength, a measured intelligence, self-control over your power the ability to sort of get a grip on your emotions so that they're, they're not the only thing leading. A depth of understanding about the fact that what you are is also what other people are. And while we'll only ever experience ourselves and our lives, and we're sort of all self-centric in that way, we're all pretty much the same person. You know, we're all very connected and are more similar than we are different. And so what's the difference really between a Marley and Child's pain and Aaron's pain? It's been a really amazing and interesting season. I feel like in a lot of ways, the show made its thesis crystal clear. Like I was pretty convinced that this is where it was going since Irwin. Irwin for me is sort of the microcosm of of the whole show. Like he as a character for me represents the struggle all of them are in and a successful result of that struggle. He was kind of the first example of that for me and still the best example. But it's that very thing. You know, er Erwin himself had that burning desire. He had that burning selfish desire and he was sort of in service to two masters. He was in service to his wiser side, which was self-sacrificial and wanted to fight for others and wanted to make the world a better place and valued life, you know, versus his selfish side that just wanted to know the truth 
and wanted to validate his father's life, you know, and, and validate himself as being right and as the people who took his father away from him as being evil and all this stuff. And in the end, he made the right choice and he made the choice in a way that gave him peace. And he connected that idea to the past because he stands there and even is in that position because of great people before him, like his father and like many others, and his fallen comrades that died for him and built a legacy for the future that we're still seeing being played out right now. You know, the people who are against Eren probably would not be in this situation and would not be as powerful or I'm guessing as successful as they will be without the legacy of Erwin Smith. And so he sacrificed his own personal desires, which he may not have gotten anyway, like he may never have gotten the full truth, right? For something bigger than himself. And in doing so actually found himself, you know, he found something better than what he was initially looking for, even though it was painful and tore him up. In this season, you sort of get that in multiple instances. You get that with Gabby, which I found really satisfying. You know, Gabby sort of completely turning around and dying in service to others and honoring Sasha's legacy even. And John John making some peace with his past. And Hanji making some peace with her past. And Mikasa struggling to grapple with her only real burning desire for the whole show. I mean, her main line up to this point has been Eren, right? So it's no easy task for her, yet here she is fighting that fight every day. And I don't think it'll be easy for her. I, th I know she'll be tempted and it could go a bunch of different ways. I sort of feel like she's already on the path to make a choice that is in line with her conscience. Although that's one of the things I'm most excited for next season is to see their dynamic. This season, man, just because of the stakes and the length and the scope, it's turning out to be one of the most amazing and epic, terrifying things in all of media history. However it turns out, I think it's such a fantastic show. And one of the things that makes it so fantastic and so important to me is how relevant it is. Like the reason the show is so contentional in my opinion is just because I think it's highlighting in a very very narratively clear way where people are right now there are certain fundamental moral questions that need to be resolved and you see them in people like you see them emerging in comments and stuff you see people taking multiple sides of characters by saying well enemies need to be destroyed you know life is about power if you are harmed or if you identify an evil group because you are qualified in identifying evil you belong to a certain class that gets to make that decision about the value of other people's lives and so you are justified in any means in order to fight for what is right missing sort of the danger and the complexity and making these sorts of very large scale decisions and treating other people as just enemies, like an enemy class. And you see ideas emerging about life sort of being empty and devoid of meaning and how it doesn't really matter what happens and deaths don't matter and lives don't matter because the universe is just a cruel place. Missing, of course, any connection to actual beauty and the connection one has to the universe, which is definitely not nothing. Even if it's not what we wish it was, it's not nothing. There are values implicit in the structure of being. And so for that reason, however the show ends, it's always going to have a really significant part of my heart in media. And it's definitely one of the most engaged experiences I've ever had with any work ever. And so I just can't wait. I can't wait for the new final season, the final, final, final season to come out, which I, I guess will be the conclusion, but I, I've lost faith. I've lost trust in announced ends, but at least we have more to look forward to because I think it would be sadder if it was really over. So yeah, that is the end of the final, final season until the final, final, final season. Thank you to everyone for all the support in these videos, for putting up with somewhat of an irregular schedule. I remember coming into this season, this final, final season, feeling like I was going into war and it actually was less controversial. I feel more comfortable in its themes now than I did in the first part of the final season. But nevertheless, Attack on Titan is something to be reckoned with. It's an experience. And amazingly, despite the tragedy, you know, despite all the darkness, I find myself being increasingly more inspired by the show, by the heroism that has emerged. Heroism that has emerged from nothing, you know, from this black hole of like, life is terrible and cruel and we have no freedom. So thank you again to everybody for watching, even to those people who don't follow the channel regularly and who just stop back in for the Attack on Titan reactions. It's good to see you again. And I will see you whenever season four dash three <laughs> finally comes out.